I guess this letter didn't quite make it into the mailbox. Uh-oh. Moral dilemma. To mail or not to mail? That is the question. Uh-oh. Moral dilemma. To mail or not to mail? That is the question. I may regret this the next time I'm eating dog food for breakfast, but right now it feels pretty good. I've known Lieutenant Mac Malden for years, and occasionally we help each other out. Like a few months ago, when I gave Mac a tip on finding Rusty the Clown's body in the funhouse down the street from the Ritz. Well, as I live and breathe, it isn't Tex Murphy, my little V.I. pal. Hello, Mac. I see your midlife crisis is coming along nicely. Yeah, I know. Got a new look to go with my new attitude. This ponytail drives women wild. You wouldn't believe what someone will do to get out of paying a parking ticket. <laughs> and what does Mrs. Malden think about all this? My wife ran off with my best friend. Really? Who's your best friend? You know, I didn't catch his name. <laughs> you know what I think? I think your laughter is just a brave attempt to hide your feelings of loss and rejection. Hell, it's the nicest thing she ever did for me. Now why don't you do something nice for me and clear out of my office? I stopped by to ask you some questions and I am not leaving until I get some information. All right, all right. What do you want? I've known Lieutenant Mac Malden for years, and occasionally we help each other out. Like a few months ago, when I gave Mac a tip on finding Rusty the Clown's body in the funhouse down the street from the Ritz. Well, as I live and breathe, it isn't Tex Murphy, my little V.I. pal. Hey, what's your arm doing in a sling? Isn't it usually your butt? <laughs> You're a funny guy, Murphy. You know, I sprained my elbow beating the hell out of a guy just because he reminded me of you. And I think you're forgetting who tipped you off about finding Rusty's remains at the funhouse and got you named Cop of the Month. I didn't forget. Though I'd like to. So what do you want? You! No, not you, the one in the hat. Have you not come to be healed? No. We've already covered that in obedience school. Not that kind of healed. I speak of the vile grub that rots within your digestive tract. So I ate three chili cheese dogs today for lunch. I don't see that that's any of your business. The lunch of the damned! Those who worship at the altar of beef, veal, and poultry shall reap the vengeance of atherosclerosis! I'll never die of ather... ather... of that. My liver will never last that long. Ah, then you too are an imbiber of the blessed potations. Which do you prefer, rum or vodka? Bourbon, actually. I, myself, prefer a nice, single malt scotch. I'll tell you what. If I bring you a bottle of single malt scotch, will you answer some questions? For a bottle of single malt, 
I will not only answer your questions, I will bless your family for three generations. For now, I must return to my preaching. Sounds like a bottle of good scotch might loosen up Crazy Gary's tongue. I heard that Sal Lucido, the former owner of the Slice of Heaven pizza parlor, kept a first-rate stash of illegally imported booze somewhere on the street. You! No, not you, the one in the hat. Have you not come to be healed? Well, now that you mention it, it's kind of hurt when I go like this. <sighs> then quit doing it! Well, I'll be darned. You're right. That actually feels much better. Heal thyself, stranger! The path of regularity and low blood pressure is straight and narrow. Partake not of the flesh, especially red meat, and choose instead the bulk and fiber of cereals, fruits, vegetables, and especially grains. Oh, I get plenty of grains of the fermented variety. Ah, oh, then you too are an imbiber of the blessed potations. Which do you prefer, rum or vodka? Bourbon, actually. I, myself, prefer a nice, single malt scotch. I'll tell you what. If I bring you a bottle of single malt scotch, will you answer some questions? For a bottle of single malt, I will not only answer your questions, I will bless your family for three generations. For now, I must return to my preaching. Sounds like a bottle of good scotch might loosen up Crazy Gary's tongue. I heard that Sal Lucido, the former owner of the Slice of Heaven pizza parlor, kept a first-rate stash of illegally imported booze somewhere on the street. This is a private number. Perfect. I'm a private detective. And you're looking for a lead? Right. You got it, sister. <laughs> Looks like you called the wrong number. Well, that didn't go very well. Maybe I should try it again. If you don't have a good reason for calling me back, I'll have the cops at your place before you disconnect. So get to the point. I've got a note that might be from the Black Arrow Killer. Okay. Let's meet. I can tell you whether it's the real thing or not. When can you meet me? I don't want to seem pushy, but if my client gets killed, it reflects poorly on me. I hope you don't mind, but I've been tracing your call. I know the area, and if it's okay with you, we'll meet at the Brew and Stew in 15 minutes. By the way, what did you say your name was? Tex Murphy. That's T-E-X. I got it. This is a private number. Yeah, I know. This is Lucia Purnell, isn't it? Yeah, I'm Purnell. Who are you? My name's Murphy. I'm a PI, and I'm investigating a case you covered in the Bay City Mirror. The Black Arrow Killer. Yeah? So are a thousand other people. What makes you so special? 
I've got a note that might be from the Black Arrow Killer. Okay, let's meet. I can tell you whether it's the real thing or not. I live in the old city on Chandler Avenue. There's a diner close by called the Brew and Stew. Let's meet there. I know the place. I'll be there in 15 minutes. By the way, what did you say your name was? Tex Murphy. That's T-E-X. I got it. Brunel certainly gave me a lot to think about. What's the common denominator between Fitzpatrick, Malloy, Kettler, and this young woman, Sandra Collins? Too few details, too many implications. The bottom line is, whoever sent the note to Emily is for real, and she's in danger. And if Emily ends up collecting dust on a slab in the morgue, she won't be very much help to me. I gotta do something, and fast. Brunel mentioned a place called Autotech. Maybe that's a place to start. Brunel certainly gave me a lot to think about. What's the common denominator between Fitzpatrick, Malloy, Kettler, and this young woman, Sandra Collins? Too few details, too many implications. The bottom line is, whoever sent the note to Emily's for real, and she's in danger. Brunel mentioned a place called Autotech. Maybe that's a place to start. You don't say. Yeah? Who told you that? Okay. The big mutant at the Flamingo, what's his name? Leech. Told us you saw someone in the girl's apartment that night. Yeah. I was kind of keeping an eye on the place once I found out she was in danger. You didn't do her much good. Hey. I tried to save her. It was Leech who stopped me before I could do anything about it. Calm down, Murphy. We don't think you're responsible for the girl's death. We just want to know what happened after. So you chased the attacker up to the roof. Then what? Well, there was a black avatar speeder up on the roof waiting for the guy. I jumped him and we struggled, but he went right over the top. We got a witness says the attacker was carrying a box when he ran from the flamingo. We didn't find it. You know anything about that? No. I've told you everything I know. All right, Murphy, you can go. Your story matches up. Right? There's one more thing. The NSA is getting involved in this. They're interested in that missing box. They're gonna wanna talk to you. Don't get too smart on this one, Murphy. You're in way over your head. Well, thanks for the tip. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, Murphy. What? Yeah, I'll be around, okay? Emily's death hit me blindside. I know I could have saved her somehow. But once again, I screwed up. Maybe I should get the hell out of this business. And then what? Being a P.I. is the only thing I know how to do. But if I had the money, then I'd blow this town in a heartbeat. Well, the only thing I can do is work the case and hope for a big payoff. First, I gotta find out about that box Horton stole from Emily's apartment. You don't say. Yeah? 
Who told you that? Okay. Did you know the guy you threw off the roof? I didn't throw anybody off the roof, okay? Like I told your lackeys out there, we were rollerblading. Things got out of hand, he jammed his wheel, and the next thing I know... You seem to forget I'm a cop. And I'm a tired, pissed off cop. If you keep getting on my nerves, I can put you in a drunk tank. I can do this whole thing again tomorrow. So, you chase the guy up to Rusty's Funhouse. Then what? Well, there was a black Avatar speeder up on the roof waiting for the guy. I jumped him, and we struggled. But he went right over the top. We got a witness says the attacker was carrying a box when he ran for the flamingo. We didn't find it. You know anything about that? No. I've told you everything I know. All right, Murphy, you can go. Your story matches up. Right? There's one more thing. The NSA is getting involved in this. They're interested in that missing box. They're gonna want to talk to you. Don't get too smart on this one, Murphy. You're in way over your head. Uh, thanks for the tip. Oh, you're welcome. One more thing. Oh. Man, this is not what you're going to tell me. Stick around in town. We might have to ask you some more questions. How many times have you told me that of the last 10 years? This case is getting way too complicated. There's a connection between Horton, the NSA, and the box Horton stole from Emily's apartment. But what is it? The NSA getting involved worries me. And then there's that gorgeous woman who got me off the hook. Who's she? I guess I need a plan of action. But first I need to talk to Emily and find out what she knows about Malloy. And then about the box Horton stole from her apartment. Sheesh, it's gonna be a busy day. Hello there. What can I do for you? I'm from the health department. We've had some complaints from some of your boarders. They say you've got roaches the size of baby roofs. My goodness, roaches? I haven't seen any. Can I see your identification? Oh, we don't carry ID at the health department. But we can always be identified by our clean hands and inner glow. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I'll have to see some ID before I can let you in. Have a nice day. Well, that didn't go very well. Maybe I should try it again. Hello there. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a man named Thomas Malloy. Is he staying here? Let me think. No, none of my guests is named Malloy. Here's a photograph of him. Oh, heavens yes. He moved in last week. Such a nice man. Well, I know he seems very nice, but he's really a sick man. 
you know, nuts. He's got a terrible case of uh, Murphy Barr syndrome. My goodness, he seems so lucid. Yes, it's a strange illness. The only symptoms are an irresistible attraction to boarding houses and, of course, compulsive lying. When he has a relapse, it's like pulling teeth to get a straight answer out of him. I'm so sorry. Well, I know that respecting and caring for your elders is considered old-fashioned, but it's a responsibility that I take very seriously. Wish you my nephew. Your uncle's not in right now, but I'll let you into his room. You can wait for him up there. Okie dokie. <laughs>